Hi guys, so I've been using the slap chop painting technique for about the past seven months and absolutely love it. And that's mainly due to it being so simple and easy and yet great results. So every miniature goes through the same process and that's primed in black and then dry brushed in a grey and dry brushed in a white. And I use cheap poster paints for this. Um, I put them in these little bottles just to make it easier to put on my desk to sort of get out. So the grey is simply a mix of, well, black and white, 50-50. And I got some good old brushes from Army Painter. I did used to use just cheap old makeup brushes, but those lovely people at Army Painter sent me some nice brushes, so that's what I use now. And in the past, I used to load up the brush with the paint and then wipe it on this kitchen towel just to get most of it off. So obviously we turned it into a dry brushing. Um, but then people said that's the wrong way to do it. Um, you're better off doing it on a bit of wood. So that's what I then went to do, and that seemed to work okay. But in my last video, a lot of people mentioned there's a better way of doing it. And I'm always up for trying new things, especially if it makes life easier and better. And in my last video, a lot of you guys mentioned making a textured dry palette. Um, yeah, it's something I'd never really thought about or heard of before. And basically all you guys were saying is I need to get sort of like a bit of board, or in this case I've got this little, uh, little plastic box, and then put a load of, well, odds and ends, greeblies, bits and pieces, whatever you've got at hand really, glue it in there, as obviously that's what's going to produce, well, the texture. So as well as all those lovely little Warhammer bits and pieces, I've also got these WizKids sort of D&D on sprue bits, which I'm more than happy to cut up and, yeah, glue onto this little, uh, this little plastic palette thing I've got. Just to add a whole variety of textures, I've also got these little sort of, um, well, like stone slabs that I've made from foam board. Um, yeah, I've had these for ages when I made some sort of D&D sets. And, yeah, I'm going to use my hot glue gun because, well, this is nice and cheap and it's probably the easiest thing I've got. And then it is just a case of, well, gluing stuff down. And obviously this is where, when you're making your own one, you'll use whatever bits and pieces you've got to hand. I say it doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, obviously the more texture, the better, because obviously that's the whole reason of making this thing, is for the texture. And yeah, you just sort of stick down whatever you've got, whatever you want. Um, main reason I wanted to use some of these sort of stone slabs is just so I've got an area that is relatively flat, or flattish just because that's the area that I'm going to put the paint on, load my brush up, and then it's all these other textured bits um, I'm going to use to, well, rub said paint off. So guys, whenever you're watching my videos, yeah, please leave comments down below, as I always read them, and as I say, this hobby, well, something I love about this hobby is people share what they know, uh, which is just awesome, which means we can all grow, we can all get better, and we can all try new things out. And I'm definitely one for trying something out, because... Well, unless you try it out, you don't know what it's like. Um, I say I do watch a lot of other YouTubers, uh, painters, makers, all the rest of it. And yeah, sometimes I take sort of things of what they do. And sometimes, well, sometimes I don't. So yeah, everything's glued in. Obviously, there's a lot of gaps here and there. So I wanted to sort of fill a lot of that in with some sand. So I've got this Game Master scenery sand. And yeah, again, I'm just going to glue areas, pop this in. As again, this is going to have a lot of texture to it which will help um, when I come to sort of, well, do the dry brushing later on. But we'll, uh, we'll get to that bit in a second. So I really enjoyed making this little thing, actually. Um, it's quite cool looking. <laughs> and yeah, I am definitely going to be using this a lot. I say this, um, this is quite a game changer. It's one of those things where I never knew I needed it. Well, I didn't even know what it was, to be honest. Uh, but now I've started using it. I've, I've been using it for a couple of miniatures that I've started painting. And yeah, it's just awesome, guys. So, obviously, it didn't take too long to make this because it is just a case of, well, chucking stuff on a board. Um, but now I need to paint it. But as I've used some XPS foam in this, if I use normal primer, it would just kind of like eat into it. So I'm using, again, the good old Games Master from Army Painter. And this stuff is perfect for XPS foam as, well, it primes it but doesn't eat it, which is great. And there we go, one textured dry palette, which I'd never heard of before. And, yeah quickly done. So when I do my little miniatures, um, prime them in black and then I do obviously the dry brushing with grey and dry brushing with white and this is where this little palette helps out. I can load my brush up and I can use the texture to well to help make my brush drier but this is the bit I really love about this. Uh, when you're doing this you can see exactly how much paint is left on the brush um, just so you know when you do go to then do it onto the miniature you know exactly how much paint is going to come off because, well, you've just been sort of doing it over 
the texture dry palette brush thingy what's it and yeah it works out a treat um yeah you guys know what i mean and then we can just dry brush the miniature well as normal so when dry brushing with the grey, it doesn't matter if you get too much on, to be honest, because obviously it's still a relatively darker colour. It is more so the white, uh, and this is the one, say for me, this is a big game changer. Because initially, when I would do this, I would try and wipe off as much white as I could. Then I would probably use the brush on my finger, just to sort of see how much white was on there. And then I would go and paint, or dry brush, the miniature. Sometimes, there was too much white left on the, uh, on the brush. But with the textured dry brush palette, I know exactly how much white's on this, and I know that when I go onto the model, it's going to be the perfect amount, which, again, say this is a game changer, uh, because there, there has been times in the past where I've gone to do this on a miniature, there's been too much white on the brush, and yeah, I've then had it all, almost start again by putting some black back over the white. But um, yeah, this textured dry brush palette, uh, yeah, it lets you know exactly how much paint is left on the brush, which is awesome. So the other tip I was told as well was to do a lot more sort of round movements rather than sort of like brushing left to right. Uh, it's more of like a, a wipe on, wipe off sort of situation. So yeah, again guys, I do always read your comments and yeah, any tips and tricks, by all means let me know because I, well, I am a new to this painting. I say it's only the last seven months I've actually enjoyed and well, been really happy with my results from, uh, yeah, from the slap chop painting. And I, I love the look of this as well. <laughs> so my dry brush palette uh, does look pretty awesome. And as I say, just for loading the brush up and then being able to see how it's going to look on the miniature, because I can see how it looks on this, is just, yeah, awesome. So it's one of those simple little trip, uh, tips and tricks. But uh, yeah, game changer, and it's going to make things so much easier for me. And we're going to get good results every time. So here's my miniature. Um, I did start painting this in a live stream yesterday. I will continue painting this. And there'll be a video out later. So the other good thing about this is, obviously, with all my speed paints, I've painted the lids. So I know exactly, well, what the colour's going to look like. Because sometimes these labels can be a bit misleading. Especially because I obviously paint these onto the slap chop method rather than just painting these on the white. But I have got quite a lot of the Citadel contrast paints. So with these, again, I never know quite how they're going to look until, obviously, I put them onto the model. And this is where the textured dry brush palette comes into its own again because rather than going straight onto the miniature I can use it as like a, a little tester and I can see exactly how this paint's going to look because well this dry brush palette thingy has got the same sort of look to it as my miniatures do which is just awesome so guys I know I sound really excited and this is such a simple thing uh, but yeah I am really excited because this is a simple thing it is going to help out my painting and it's just awesome. And I say, for any sort of new sort of paints that I get, whether the, uh, the Citadel Contrast once, or the Dippin' Inks from uh, Green Stuff World, or whoever it is, I can use this as a tester to see exactly how the paints are going to look before, yeah, before slapping these things onto the miniature. And then once all the paints dry, I can see exactly, well, how it's dried, how it looks, whether or not it's the paint that I wanted to use. Um, and yeah, we go from there. But obviously, when we come to doing the dry brushing again, we simply, well, do what we did before. Use our little bits of paint on the, uh, say, that's why I've got the, the flat area, just to make it easier to load the brush up. Um, and then, yeah, just sort of rubbing the paint off. I can obviously easily go over any of the painted areas, and they all go back to being how they were before. Um, and yeah, I can use them as testers for the next sort of new lot of contrast paints or paints I get, which is just awesome. Well, I hope you found the video of some use um, and the information in it sort of is going to help you out. And again, guys, by all means, let me know in the comments any tips and tricks you've got or anything you want to see me, well, see me have a go at. There is another video on the screen, guys. It'd be great if you can click on that. Share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.